Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Today I'm presenting SB 596, which would expand current teacher protections. Um, specifically, the bill would make it a misdemeanor to harass a school employee or make credible threats against the employee of their, or their family for the reasons related to employees' course of duties while they are away from school sites. Frankly, I wish I wouldn't feel it necessary to do a bill like this. Um, we have become a society where simple things like teaching accurate history um, has inflamed people. Um, some of you may know that uh, swastikas were even brought into a school board meeting in my district. Um, this is 2023. We shouldn't be having that type of conduct um, at a school board meeting. And so it makes me partly sad to be here to present this bill, but I also feel the need to, to emphasize that Folks who are doing their job shouldn't be subject to harassment and threats in their private life when they're with their families getting a cup of coffee or going to a movie theater. According to a recent study from UCLA's Institute for Democracy, Education and Access, and the UCR uh, Civic Engagement Research Group, 65% of California high school principals surveyed, 65% report substantial conflict over education issues in those schools. Topics at the center of the conflict include instruction about race and racism, LGBTQ plus student rights, books in school libraries, and social emotional learning. Principals participating in the study reported that individuals connected to outside organizations have resorted to threatening school employees. Again, I think that's important. The vast majority of parents just want their kids to have a good education and are not engaged in this type of activity. Um, and when I ask parents who express concerns to me, which I'm happy to hear, I ask them if they intend to threaten or, or harass somebody and they say no. And I said, well, then there's nothing to fear with this bill. As a school parent, uh, myself, a PTA member, I know that parents want the best for their children and this bill does not infringe upon any parents' rights to advocate for their children at PTA meetings or school board meetings or during IEP meetings. Uh, disagreements with academic standards are inappropriately aimed at the hardworking teachers and administrators and, and others. Um, and it makes me sad. Existing laws as measures in place to hold individuals accountable for causing substantial disruption at a school site. However, the protections currently in place do not, in my opinion, accurately and clearly apply to incidents that occur off campus. And that's what we're trying to address here. So when people are in their private lives, SB 596 seeks to expand current law in an effort to protect school employees. In doing so, the bill would ensure that our school employees can continue fostering supportive and inclusive learning environments to help students thrive and unencumbered by fear. On a final note, as I mentioned before, I understand the importance of parental involvement. It's critical. It's central. That's why we have school board elections. That's why we have public meetings. But conversations with parents in my district and from the ACLU and others, you know, we've tried to be reasonable. We've tried to take clarifying amendments, and I'm going to continue to review all the suggestions that bring forward. Fr frankly, one thing that we didn't think about was special needs children, and I know that was raised that uh, should this apply to special needs children, and that's an amendment that I'm going to look to, to take beyond this committee because, again, that's not what we're trying to address. We're really asking people to advocate and not hate to love your children and your neighbor's child and just conduct yourself like you would at your grandmother's house. We can argue with our sister at Thanksgiving and kiss them at Christmas. You know, this is not about not having a principled conversation. It's about should somebody be threatened and harassed for teaching, for doing their job under state law. And I would say they shouldn't, and that's why I respectfully ask for an I vote when we have a quorum, and with me we have Tony Trigero from the California Teachers Association and Tristan Brown from the California Federation of Teachers to also advocate for the bill. Thank you. You, you both you have five minutes total. Mr. Chair, Tony Trigero on behalf of the California Teachers Association. To add to the remarks of the author, in 2022, the RAND Corporation released the results of a survey of almost 4,000 teachers and principals nationwide, showing, among other things, that 61% of the principals and 37% of the teachers surveyed reported experiencing harassment about politicized topics, which contribute to burnout, frequent job-related stress, and symptoms of depression. 
Additionally, schools and particularly teachers have increasingly become targets of parents and other individuals and groups seeking to limit specific types of instruction, namely critical race theory and topics related to gender and sexuality. RCTA members believe school employees should be safe from aggressive and violent behaviors, as well as physical, verbal, and psychological abuse, particularly given the documented increases in the number of confrontational activities faced by school employees. We believe all efforts to establish practices and protocols guaranteeing the safety of school employees must be immediate and far-reaching. Such efforts benefit the school community by impacting teacher retention and recruitment and ensuring appropriate conduct within the community at large. Acknowledging the education workforce shortages and the ongoing issues around teacher recruitment and retention issues, SB 596 offers an additional layer of safety and security that our students and school employees deserve. CTA respectfully asks for an I vote when the time is appropriate. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Tristan Brown of CFT, Union of Educators and Classified Professionals. I uh, want to echo the comments of the author. It is a sad day that we have to talk about this topic. And it is a sad era that we live in now where people who once had just the right for their own opinions now apparently have rights to their own facts. And those facts, with air quotes, have radicalized individuals to not just stop our election in DC years ago, but also group up and attack educators for phantom issues, as my colleague mentions, uh, issues of quote unquote grooming children or providing diversity through critical race theory and these things could not be further from the truth. Educators are here to do a job that is on sacred ground and help the next generation become equipped with the skills they need to survive in this world. That is all we try to do and unfortunately when we asked our members what is the world like right now, they came back with stories of harassment, of stalking, and of threats to their lives and their family members' lives. It is just simply unfortunate that this is the era we live in, so while we are sad that this bill has to be written, we are grateful to the author for taking the leadership in doing this and grateful that he is willing to listen to some of the uh, objections, and I know that we're gonna land this plane uh, with a good policy here and make sure that everyone is protected, and California can say, public education is a institution that should be beyond reproach and should be held to a higher standard, and you shall not threaten it, it is the foundation of any democratic society, and that's what our members wish to do. So we thank you for voting aye today on this important bill. Thank you. Are there any other witnesses in support? Name and organization. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Andrea Ball on behalf of the Glendale Unified School District in support. Thank you. Good morning, Chair, members. Sam Nasher with the Los Angeles County Office of Education in support. Thank you. Good morning, Chair and members. Jessica Hay with the California School Employees Association in support. Thank you. Olia Griffin with the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees in support. Thank you. Good morning, Megan Bear with the Association of California School Administrators in support. Thank you. Thank you. Now, are there any witnesses in opposition? five minutes between the two of you, whenever you're ready. Thank you. My name is Ali Snyder. Do you want to know why parents are upset? Here are some examples from my school district, Davis Joint Unified School District. On a school trip out of state, my friend's daughter and a boy shared a hotel room by themselves because both identify as non-binary. Against her mother's wishes, our own district policy and despite the obvious dangers to both children, school representatives felt this overnight room arrangement was the best way to respect the student's gender identities. Unfortunately, words do not change biology. Girls who say they are non-binary are still at risk of rape and pregnancy, even when they don't identify as members of a sexually dimorphic species. Here's another example. This book is offered to kids as young as 12 in my son's school. In language targeting kids, it encourages using sex apps and performing sex acts. I quote, perhaps the most important skill you will master as a gay or bi man is the timeless classic, the hand job. A good handy is all about the wrist action. Rub the head of the cock back and forth with your hand 
A bad handy okay. is grasping a penis and shaking it like a ketchup bottle. Finally, <laughs> rubbing two peens together in one hand feels awesome. Mega combo handy, end quote. Ask yourselves if these examples would make you seriously alarmed for the safety of your children. Would you remain calm in, if your kid's school didn't stop such obvious endangerment? Rather than criminalize parents who are terrorized by the grooming of their children, the state should penalize the pedophiles responsible for it. The most effective way to protect school employees from angry parents is for the state to stop mandating schools sexualize their children. Please vote no on SB 596. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Nicole Young and I am the mother of six and the chapter chair of the Placer County Moms for Liberty group. SB 956 has it all wrong. Schools don't need to be protected from parents. Kids need to be protected from sexualization and indoctrination by schools. Senator Portino knows exactly why parents are upset, teaching transgenderism and inappropriate sex ed courses. The bill references both of these codes. The number of kids with gender confusion is growing exponentially because of the schools, asking for pronouns, sometimes daily, telling kids that they could be born in the wrong body, instructing them to keep secrets from their parents, but go ahead and connect with strangers online. Schools are the pipeline to gender clinics. Recently in my community, a wellness center on the high school campuses advertised a family-friendly drag show to minor students, 12 and above, encouraging the kids to dance for cash tips, a new low. This group, called the Landing Spot, didn't inform parents. Landing Spot reps were on campus during school hours without proper background checks or MOUs. It was through the Freedom of Information Act we learned it was the teachers clearing out classrooms to allow these people access to the children. I encourage you parents who have not been previously aware of what's going on, utilize the Freedom of Information Act. And then you can see why we are all so concerned. It is not harassment to be concerned. Minor children are being sexualized and encouraged to dance provocatively in drag for adults in exchange for cash. There is a penal code for that, solicitation of a minor. This bill is designed to stifle parents' voices. We will not shut up. In fact, it is our duty to our children to get louder. Please vote no on SB 596. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other witnesses in opposition? Good morning, Chairman. David Bullock from the San Fernando Valley Parents and San Fernando Valley Alliance in opposition. Thank you. Good morning, Carmen Nicole Cox on behalf of ACLU Cal Action in respectful opposition on constitutional and equity grounds. Thank you. Nicole Pearson, attorney, founder of Facts Law, Truth, Justice, representing over 60,000 community members in vehement opposition to this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mrs. G, and I'm here on behalf of my three children and all of Orange County, and I oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring it back. To, to the committee, uh, Mr. Zaber. Uh, Senator Pertino, thank you for bringing this bill. I, um, uh, you know, I am looking at it, the news every day, and frankly, are am appalled at really some of the activities that um, adults in our communities think are appropriate, uh, an appropriate behavior uh, to direct at teachers and school staff members. And um, I know that there's been some, um, one of the comments about the bill is that some of the activities uh, may be captured under other, um, uh, under other laws. But I think in a case, uh, you know, the, the, the times that we're living in, I think we need to send a clear message that um, attacking and threatening our teachers is something that's just unacceptable. And so I do think a new law is, important and appropriate, and I will be supporting it. Um, I noted uh, a couple comment letters, and I uh, just wanted, would like to ask you to look at these after the hearing. Uh, one is um, comments related to whether this would apply to people that are, to students essentially under 18. Um, I do worry a bit if it apply. I, I don't think students should be, should be subject to this, so um, if, if it's not clear in the bill, uh, I, 
didn't have time to work my way through and and um, and figure that out. I, I ask that you remove that because I do think that there are some school districts, frankly, where um, LGBTQ and students of color and other vulnerable communities could be targeted by hostile school districts for discipline. And I just want to make sure that that bill isn't used in that way. Um, the other thing is I saw that there was a late letter from ACLU that came in last night that had a couple comments in it, one of which related to what happens at school, um, at sort of board meetings. And I do think that there are free speech rights that are, uh, that, that that calls into question and would just ask that you look at the ACLU letter carefully and consider some of those amendments. So with that, uh, when, at the appropriate time, if I'm here, uh, I'd love to move the bill and we'll be supporting it. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Uh, you may close. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And yes, I, I share the concern on uh, age and students. And we, we originally had said a person, which would have been a broad definition. Um, uh, ACLU asked for it to be non-student. We offered adult, making a distinction between an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old. And so... I was hoping that would sort of hit the sweet spot because I do think there is a difference between an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old, and we don't want to target 14-year-olds or 15-year-olds um, with this at all. And I, the, in that late letter, too, they re reference special needs students, and so we will look at that uh, as well because we don't want unintended consequences. Uh, just, I, I guess, finally, um, you know, I grew up in the 70s with a gay older brother, uh, and I remember what he went through back then. Uh, the snickers, the teasing, um, the maligning. Um, and then I think about today where, you know, we have a situation with three in five LGBT teenagers think about suicide. Uh, two out of five uh, straight teenagers think about suicide. I mean, we have to be cognizant and loving of all our students. And part of that is having a, a nurturing school environment where educators are free to, to teach and administrators are free to administrate and uh, follow you know, best practices and the law of the land. And uh, you know, nothing in this bill takes anyone's rights away to oppose uh, the law, uh, to, in, in, to advocate, um, to say what was said today. Uh, nothing in this bill. Uh, and there's actually a provision in the bill that says constitutionally protected free speech will not be part of this. And so, you know, this is a difficult conversation for some, an easy conversation for others. Um, but I'm determined to make sure that we protect our students first and foremost and protect those who want to educate our students uh, as well. And so with that, when you have a quorum, I would respectfully ask for an I vote. Okay. And I, th I think this is an important issue to discuss. Um, uh, as a parent of two children who are teachers, one who I've talked to her out of several times who want to be a board member. Um, so I, I thank you for the, the, the amendment or the part about school board meetings and that they need to be um, some decorum. We can argue about anything like we did here today. We can hear any diverse opinions. I, I encourage that, um, but we should not, and I think this is the purpose of your bill, it should not evolve to where it becomes um, violent. And we've seen that happen in other places, not just here, but other places. Um, even in my own LA City Council, it can get a little raunchous and, and it's hard for people to continue to do the business of the people. And so I, I understand where you're coming from is really, really important. Um, and as the parent of a gay teacher, my son, um, I understand what you're trying to do. I wouldn't want him harassed um, while he's having his free time um, or just being able to teach the kids biology. Um, he's about. He has advanced biology and an advanced calculus teacher. And so while he's teaching advanced calculus, I wouldn't want somebody coming in there yelling at him because of whatever. Um, so I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Let teachers teach. Um, we've, 
you know, we, you and I have talked about it. We've always had uh, a thing where we don't, and that's probably the only thing. And if, you, if we could get past that one thing that we've discussed, uh, I think you would get, we would get there. Um, uh, and, and if it doesn't make it out of this committee, I think you should seriously consider that one amendment to, so we can nail this because it is important that we do something, um, especially after hearing the testimony today. I got a real life example of what you're dealing with. And so um, uh, we, we need to do something and we just gotta make sure we don't tip it in a way where it gets too far um, to the left or the right, that we, we stay right down the middle. And so that, that's where I'm, I'm coming from. So um, again, I thank you for bringing this um, forward because I think it's an important topic that we need to discuss. We need to discuss openly and most important, calmly and rationally. Uh, that, that's, that's what this whole system's about. And when we get a quorum, we'll, we'll take it up for a vote. Thank you.